Praise the Lord, Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Holy Christ. Welcome back to the dinner table. Uh, very excited to have you here at the dinner table as this is a life-changing message. As I say pretty much every week, this is probably one of my favorite messages that the beloved Holy Spirit has given this far. Now, um, as you know, we uh, come to the dinner table with clean hands, which represents repenting. Correct. So let's pray together in the mighty name of Yeshua Christ. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgive me for my sins, all I've Every sin I've ever committed, wash me in your holy blood, mind, body, soul, spirit. Sprinkle me, O great and eternal high priest. Lord, renew the spirit of my mind. Help me to receive this word and to walk in it and for the word to wash me and change me. Activate this word to be a living word, a alive message from the Holy Ghost. Bind the devil in his powers, stop him from hindering this word, and stealing this word out of my heart. Guard me, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for your teachings. Amen. Silah. With that being said, I know I don't usually wear a hat at the dinner table, but you know, gotta... You know, show off that ghetto gospel hat. Thank you, Jesus. So, a great, great message. Uh, Completely inspired by a beloved uh, brother and partner in the ministry. So, let's get straight into it, shall we? I wrestled with a title for this one. I really did. So, I'm probably going to give you like four titles and then decide which one I want to say it is. First off, you should have a pen and a notepad. Most importantly, you should have your sword of the spirit, your mighty word of God, what most know as the Bible. Now I got a couple. I got one over here. I got here. I got there. I'm Look, I'm coming fully loaded. You know what I'm saying? So hope you enjoy this message. And all glory to Jesus Christ, Lord, guide me, speak through me, touch the heart of the hearer. To receive the word and may your word be alive. Holy Ghost, anoint the word that I speak. As Jesus, I know I'm just a waiter delivering your food. In Jesus Christ's name. That was was my personal prayer I had to do real quick. Because as you know at the dinner table, Revelation 3.20 says that Jesus waits and he knocks at your door. And if you would just let him in, he will have dinner with you. And you with him. You ready to have dinner with Yahshua the Messiah? I know I am. So, let's take a swig of my my G, my water, my agua, you know what I'm saying? Want to say, so appreciative and so thankful. A beloved partner in the ministry went to the P.O. Box. Y'all see that? Hallelujah. Went to the P.O. Box. And a package from Israel was in the mail. And uh, I know this brother would want to remain anonymous. uh, Because that's the type of brother he is. He gives secretly. And I respect him for that. And um, he listened to the voice of God. And he donated a brand brand new shofar to the ghetto gospel ministries and brother may the lord richly bless you for your obedience for your kindness may the lord truly reward you now this is amazing they done messed up giving brother works a shofar can i get an amen man did they ever would have thought Cleaning this and emptying this and polishing this, it would be sent to the ghetto gospel ministries. Can I get a name, man? I know y'all want to see me blow it. Check it out, y'all ready? Okay, okay, all right. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta confess. 
I don't, I don't know how to do it yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to do it yet. You feel me? So, I don't want you making fun of me. I don't want a thumbs down on the video because Brother Words don't know how to blow the show far yet. I just got it in the mail. It's my first time being blessed with one of these. Me and Lioness and the boys were so excited. And this is a minute this is a ministry so far. So technically, for all our brothers and sisters that are partners to the ministry, technically this is your so far too. Amen. Because we're all one body in Jesus Christ's name. So Brother, we love you and we thank you for this amazing gift to the ministry. And shout out to all our partners that are so faithful. Um, you guys are just amazing. You brothers and sisters come from all different types of, the, of walk of life. You know what I mean? Some of you do most of your support in praying. You know what I mean? We have those that are financially supporting, those that are spreading the, the, the messages on their social media. You're trying your best to push this prophetic ministry to the four ends of the earth because you know the kingdom of heaven is with us and you know Jesus Christ of Nazareth is truly with us. Emmanuel, can we say it together? God is with us. So thank you to our brothers and sisters, our partners. We love y'all so much, and we're just so grateful to have you in this ministry. From all over the world, we're getting emails, um, brothers and sisters that are testifying to what the Lord in this ministry is doing for you. Uh, we're, we're, ca we're, we're, we're catching up to the emails and the return phone calls and the prayer requests and uh, trying to hit the mailbox and send things off and all the while doing street ministry and visiting those in hospitals and doing this, whatever God leads us to do. Not to mention um, private time in the Lord. You got to make sure you charge up as you guys, I hope you've seen the sermon, The Law of Preservation. Now, are y'all ready? So, as soon as I got this package in the mail, and you know, Holy Spirit told me immediately, <laughs> as soon as I seen it, I was like, Lord, did you just bless us with a shofar? You did, didn't you? You did. Now, the beautiful thing about Jesus Christ is the relationship that we have with him here in this ministry is there's, an ex there's expectations that have to be met. Like, when Jesus Christ gives things to us, I'll just say for me, in general, like, he expects things from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, where much is given, much is what required. So... I, I knew immediately when when I when I pulled this beautiful shofar, this ram, this horn, this this trumpet, when I when I held it in my hands, I knew immediately and the word of the Lord came upon me. And this revelation dropped on me that changed my life. Now, brother, you who knew? You 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 probably didn't even realize, or maybe you did. When you obeyed God, because I know you were led by the Holy Spirit to do this, and you sacrificed, and, and guess what, y'all? These are not cheap. These are not cheap, especially these that come from Israel, and they're made of, in a very ancient way. And this one is a polished one. Like, this took time. Somebody handcrafted this personally. Brother, if you're watching, and I'm sure eventually you'll see this video would you have ever known that your obedience to sow into this ministry would birth a mighty word? <laughs> I, I, I'm done. I can't, I can't do this right. I'm going to have to holler at y'all later. See you next week. I'm just messing with you. Let's get into the word. Are you excited? I know I am. So again, shout out to the brothers and sisters. Your, your financial support is huge, okay? Because we're trying to get into movies, books. Uh, trying to get into, there are certain TV stations now that are online where we can reach thousands of people, um, radio stations. Like, there's so many avenues that it, 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 it's, it would be dumb not to go these route, not to go these uh, routes with this true gospel here. So, uh, thank you. We love you guys so much. Continue to stay in this fight. Let's go. We're almost here. Jesus Christ is at the door. Here we go. These are the titles that I was wrestling with. Number one, 
the cry of Mordecai. Write that down. I like that title. I like that title. The cry of Mordecai. Write that down. Number two. The New Testament shofar. Write that down. The New Testament shofar. Thirdly, the trumpet of Jesus Christ. The trumpet of Jesus Christ. Those are the three main titles. I'm wrestling with it, so I don't know yet, but write all three down. Now, it's amazing how, like, you will download immediately. So, as soon as I got this, 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 uh, you know, and what this is is called the kudu horn. These are the real big ones. Now, there's all different types. And, you know, I, I kind of, um, you know, I was led. The Lord showed me, look up how they're made. And it actually strengthened the message that I have for y'all. So, looking up how they're made, there's, there's shorter horns that are maybe like this long. That they, they used to wear on their side and battle. And then they got the kudu horn, which is the loud one. And I'm telling you, man... It's a fearful sound. Back in those days, when when the Israelites, when the Hebrews, when the Jews was traveling the land, and uh -huh, when you heard that sound, depending on what type of sound it was, you would have been terrified, okay? Because there's something supernatural about the shofar. Now, you know brother works. I'm going to go right. Everyone goes left with this. You know me. I got to go that, that, that alone path. I got to walk that different path. So, you know, most people will have videos about the shofar. And, and that's beautiful. But everybody's missing the hidden revelation. So, I hope you excited and ready. You got your fork and your plate. I know I haven't been giving y'all a plate. I'm like, you know what? It was cool in the beginning, but me just sliding you a plate. Probably I should get back to it. Leave a comment if you think I shouldn't have stopped that. But my point is this. Let's go. That's my point. Enough works. You do this every time. You talk for 20 minutes, and then you get into the word. And I tell you every time, that's how I roll at the dinner table. What you want? You know what I'm saying? I like to chill at the dinner table. See how your day is going. How, how, how's mom's? You know what I mean? How the fam going? You know, you got to work your way up to the work. It's like you got to do jumping jacks and stretch your muscles before the game, right? So, all right, muscles are stretched. You know what I mean? We ready for this. So, glory be to Jesus, the king of glory, and the chef. Come on, you should know about now. And the chef of Chefs, can I get an amen? Yes, he is the greatest cook. So, let's get it. Y'all ready? Here we go. The shofar. Well, I got a ton of scriptures where the shofar is in the word. Now, what I'm going to do to save a whole lot of time is I'm going to give you a ton of scriptures that you are to write down. Because I know you got your pen in the pad. And you're going to read these on your own time. And it's just places where the shofar is mentioned. Wherever you hear the word trumpet, shofar, or horn, this represented this. Okay? So, thank you, Holy Ghost. He's so awesome. So, uh, let's go. Get ready. Now, I'm going to read some uh, through, and then I'm going to actually stop and actually read some. So I'm going to give you the scriptures. And then depending on which ones that stand out to me. We'll actually stop and read it together. Fair enough? Okay, here we go. Let's roll. Exodus 19. Write that down. Exodus 19, verse 16 to 19. Okay. Leviticus 25, verse 9. Come on. Joshua chapter 6. Now. This one, we got to go, excuse me, this one we got to go to. You already know, Joshua, my peoples, you, you know, Joshua was such a real soldier, a warrior. Amen. Love Joshua. He got a special place in heaven for real. So, Joshua chapter 6, let's go. We're going to start at verse 5. And it came to pass... That when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, 
and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city. Let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests and blew with the trumpets and he re and the reward came after the ark. And the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth. Until the day I bid you shout, then you shall shout. There's that law of preservation. I'm so mad I didn't put that in that sermon. Oh, that's good. The law of preservation. Did y'all catch that? Now listen. So the ark of the Lord could pass the city going about it once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp and Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord and the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them but the reward came after the ark of the Lord and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets second day third day you know what I mean now let's go and it came to pass go to verse 16 and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet trumpets Joshua said unto the people shout for the Lord hath given you the city and the city shall be accursed even it and all that therein to the Lord only Rahab the harlot shall live she and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent now, this is amazing. Th this is... Now, let's go to verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And all the people shouted with a great shout. That the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him. And they took the city. Woo-wee. <laughs> this is so, this word right here is so powerful. Please, please don't take this word for granted. Don't take the Holy Ghost for granted. Do not take this ministry for granted. Try your hardest not to be a user. If you've never seen the sermon, The Spirit of the Swan, you need to go to our YouTube channel, which you're already on right now. Afterwards, please scroll down. It's pretty far down there. It is such a liberating message. A lot of people out there, some of y'all, have the spirit of a swine. You only take from God, but you never give. That's why some of you refuse to be partnered up with the ministry. You don't want to support in any way. You watch these videos. You eat and you leave the dirty dish on the table and you walk down the road. It's a terrible thing. Okay, do not take these messages for granted. Okay, if you want to, your, your, your gratitude is determined, your latitude is determined by your gratitude. Show your appreciation to the Lord. Okay, the Bible says love not in word only, but in deed. If you believe this ministry is from the Lord, you should be trying any way you can your hardest to push this ministry further out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the message that we have here. We want to get this message to as many souls as we can. These are liberating messages. For y'all out there that appreciate these messages we give through Christ, you're, you're, you're committed, you're dedicated to supporting the kingdom of heaven, may the Lord richly bless you, okay? But for you out there, you're missing out on big blessings, I'm telling you. Get in the fight. Stop being a bystander. Stop watching the fight and get in. Be a prayer warrior. On and on it goes. Now, listen. Here you got Joshua. 
and and notice that it's the trumpets is very significant here, ain't it? Very significant. Okay, we're gonna get into that. Let me go through the scriptures. There's a whole lot, and then we can get into like what's bubbling in me. It's like I'm ready to just release this river of living water through Christ. So we got Judges chapter three. Verse 27, you could write that down. Now, real quick, we're going to go to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 34, follow along. Let's be quick. In Jesus Christ's name. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew the trumpet. And Abiezer was gathered after him. You see that? I love how the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him and he blew the trumpet. I want you to remember that for later on. Matter of fact, I'm going to write it down because that is so significant. Oh, come on. That's so good. Significant. Six. Judges. Six. Thirty-four. Write that down. Judges 7.16, Judges 7.18, and Judges 7.22. Write those down. 1 Samuel 13.3, as well as 1 Samuel 2.1. Some of these I'm going to read, but not yet. Okay, I'm just giving these to you now so you get the idea how important the shofar really was and is. Ah, here we go. 2 Samuel 2.28. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 15, chapter 15 verse 10, chapter 18 verse 16, chapter 20 verse 1, and chapter 20 verse 22. Brother, slow down, man. You got me getting a cramp in my hand. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, sister. I cannot slow down this train. We got too much to get into. It's an amazing word. Look, you can stop and rewind. You know what I mean? You got, you got the capability to do that. Now, too quick, quick, that what they call that, chicken scratch, I don't know if that's a proper word, you never know, but write quick, you know what I'm saying, it's your handwriting, you should be able to read it, 1 Kings 1, chapter 1, verse 34, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 39, and 1 Kings chapter 1, 41, 2 Kings chapter 9, 13, 1 Chronicles, Chapter 15, verse 28. Second Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 14. Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 18. We shall read chapter 4, verse 20. Take a walk with me. Let's go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah is in the building. Can I get an amen? Okay, are y'all there? I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I'm ready. Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 20. In what place, therefore, you hear the sound of the trumpet, resort you hither unto us, our God shall fight for us. Make a mental note of that one. That one is heavy. I'm, I'm trying to warn y'all. This word is building up to something so powerful. I'm telling you, thank you, Jesus Christ. This word is going to change your life. It changed my life. It changed my life. I'm not the same. The word is changing us. In this ministry And if you're in this ministry I don't care if you live in Alaska Hawaii Kenya Canada Florida Cali Texas New Mexico New York Boston where, Chicago Wherever you at This word If you're in this ministry There's an anointing that pours out It is going to continue to change you I'm very excited Because you are changing You are growing in the womb Of the gospel <laughs> I'm not going to get into that right now. You should have already watched that message titled The Womb of the Gospel. Hopefully you've seen that message. Now, remember the blowing of the trumpet signifies God fighting for us. Remember that. Okay, Job chapter 39 verse 24 to 25. And of course, you know Psalms gets it in. Psalms 47 5. Psalms 81 3. Psalms 98 6. Psalms 150 verse 3. Psalms 18 verse 2 and Psalm 75 verse 10. Like I said, some of these we're going to go back and read at the appropriate time of the message. Can I get it? Amen. Isaiah chapter 18 verse 3, chapter 27 verse 13, chapter 58 verse 1. 
that's my one right there. That's that's the one I'm excited to read to y'all, but not yet. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 19. 4, verse 21. Chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6, verse 17. Chapter 42, verse 14. And chapter 51, verse 27. Woo! This word is heavy. It got me sweating up in here. Okay. Ezekiel in the house. Ezekiel 33, 3, that's a nugget. Read actually, really the whole chapter of Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 29, 21 as well. Hosea 50, uh, excuse me, Hosea 5, verse 8, and Hosea 8, verse 1. Joel 2, verse 1, and 2, 15. Amos 2, chapter 2, uh, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 2, and chapter 3, verse 6. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 16. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 14 and Micah chapter 4 verse 13. Uh, y'all listen, I think we got enough. Okay, there's some more, but we're going to leave that alone for now because we got to really get into this. Now, it's about to heat up. All glory to the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Brother Works, what you going to do different? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do different. I'm not going to follow everyone else's footnotes. I'm not going to just... Go by the traditions of men and what other preachers, preachers, and preachers have taught on. We have a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we need to always make sure that the Holy Ghost is our number one teacher. As much as you love this ministry and you really enjoy what God through me teaches you, you better have a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost because he's always going to be your greatest teacher, your number one teacher. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> so, where I seen the hidden revelation, what hit me like a ton of bricks, was I knew immediately there's something missing here. The teaching of the shofar. And like I said, everybody likes to go the Old Testament, Jewish route, the Hebrew route, where they have a physical shofar. You know what I'm saying? And they talk about, you know, the different sounds it makes and how different trumpet calls were for different things. And we're going to get into that. But <sighs> what if there's something deeper that a lot of people are not catching? You excited? I know you are. Some of y'all love the word of God. And I, and I love the fact you love the word of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Now, here's where we're going to go with this. Y'all know I love things that bring glory to Jesus Christ, right? Like the Sabbath. Who would have ever known that the Sabbath day was actually to pay homage and glo bring glory to Jesus, who is the eternal Sabbath day? See where I'm going with this. So could it be that the shofar was pointing to Jesus Christ? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this right now. This is this is amazing, Lord. So, what happened when Jesus Christ came to the earth? Now, first off, let, let's talk about this shofar, right? It's it's used for multiple reasons. Now, there's different trump, trumpet calls. Like, and, and again, I apologize for giving those scriptures so fast, but come on. Just write them down. Take your time. Pause. Rewind. Get them written down. Don't get all bent out of shape. I had to go quick with that because I got too much to talk about. Okay. So, one main trumpet call is the trumpet call of war or for battle. Right. Some examples would be Judges 7, Joshua 6, Amos 2, verse 2, which I actually want to read that one. Come on. I'm like turning with one finger. But Amos, if you get there before me, good for you. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 2, verse 2. But I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kurath, and Moab shall die with turmoil, with the shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. You see that? So there is a the trumpet in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 14, or Jeremiah 4, 19. 
Zephaniah 1.16, Jeremiah 49.21, uh, 2. Uh, you have numbers. We're actually going to go to numbers. This is, uh, now, again, you know, when you're going through this, you got to see it for what it is. All right, hold on. Let me just put this down because I don't like turning the pages with one, one finger. So, let's go to numbers, okay? And let's get there. All right, we're going to go to Numbers 10. Follow along now. Follow me as I follow Christ, the Bible says. Numbers 10, 9. Okay, look at what it says in Jesus' mighty name. It says, And if you go to war in the land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So, there is a trumpet calling when you go to war. Oh, this is such a good word. Trumpets are a, uh, trumpets can be blown for signaling, right? To give a signal or, or a certain alarm per se, right? Uh, you know, some examples, I'll just give a couple. Leviticus 25.9, um, Numbers 29.1, um, Psalms 81.3. 2 Kings 11, 14, that should be enough. Um, one of the most amazing ones is a trumpet would be sounded declaring a king, right? Kingship, that's 2 Kings 9, 13, 2 Kings 11, 14, 1 Kings 1, 39, 1 Kings 1, 34, and 2 Samuel 15, 10. Now, for example, when Solomon was, was declared king, they said, blow the trumpet, declare Solomon king. They did that to Jehu too. Some examples, okay? I'm, I'm going through these for a reason. Trust me, it's all for a reason. I'm building this up for the mighty, mighty blow. Hallelujah, to strike at the head of the enemy. Thank you, Yeshua the Messiah. There were trumpet calls of warnings, right? Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Ezekiel 33, and I mentioned that earlier, and I, I'd like us to go to that one real quick. We opened up to Ezekiel 38. That was that was that was no joke. So Ezekiel 33, look at look at what it says. In Jesus' mighty name. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for a watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land and he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hear the sound of the trumpet and take not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So a trumpet was used as a sign of warning or to wake people up. Oh man, I just want to, you don't know like how bad I just want to like jump into the depth of this meaty message, but I'm, I got to be patient. I got to work my way into it, right? So there was a trumpet of victory. There was a trumpet to gather the people together and, and so on and so forth. And then God himself has a trumpet. We're going to get into that in a moment. Okay. So, Shall we just get right into it? Some of y'all probably already know where I'm going with this. I, I need some water after that. You ready for it? <laughs> Man, this is so good. Okay. First off, remember what I called this message? I think it's probably my favorite message. Is the cry of Mordecai. And it's the hidden message of the shofar. 
right? The hidden message of the shofar. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But I need to show you the revelation first. What if in the Old Testament, it was a literal shofar, right? But when I received this in the mail, I immediately downloaded the revelation. It immediately came to me. And I just felt so rich. You know, y'all, listen. When you choose God over money, and I ain't, I ain't talking to... When you choose the Lord over mammon, and you know that money is simply just a weapon in the defense, you know, the biggest givers that we have are people that don't worship money. They worship God. So therefore, they know money is a weapon. That's why they faithfully support this ministry. But what I feel makes me rich is these messages that the Lord gives us. And okay, it happened to come to me first and it downloads in me and then I feed my house and all of y'all in the ministry. But right now, we, we could have a million dollars in the ministry funds, right? And yeah, that's great. It, it could be used as a weapon. We can make movies. We can... Uh, write books. We could do all of these things. We could send missionaries. We could, you know, feed more homeless. We could send Bibles out by the hundreds. We can do all of this stuff. That's great. But that's not what should impress any of us. Okay, because money is just a weapon and a defense, the Bible says. What should excite you is the riches that are in Christ Jesus. The revelations he gives. Your greatest desire should be to have more knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what makes me rich. Don't get me wrong. We're in this world, but we're not of it, right? We we need to deal with these, these things on this dimension, right? I can't, if I got to go do a conference in California, I can't walk up to the lady at JetBlue and say, thus says the Lord, let me get on the plane. <laughs> She's going to say, where's your ticket? So yes, I get it. I'm not undermining uh, you know what we need to do in the physical realm but you got to realize that Paul said I count everything dung that I may, that I might win Christ you got to really understand that you got to know the greatest joy is getting to know Jesus greater and getting closer to him that should be your greatest joy how do you think in the book of Acts uh, chapter 4 I believe the people were selling everything they have, their house, everything, and they were laying the money at the feet of the apostles. It was because the people and the apostles only wanted Christ. That's all they cared about. Not only them wanting Christ, but pushing the gospel to as many people as they can. I'm letting y'all know it's going to come back to that again. There's, I'm telling you. Because the mark of the beast is coming. Okay, and for a lot of you Christians that you don't want to support the kingdom of heaven, you don't support this ministry and other real ministries, they're hard to find. But let's just hypothetically say you don't support Christ. Eventually, the devil is going to take your stuff anyways. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Okay, when the mark of the beast comes, are you going to be able to get your 401k? When the mark of the beast comes, are you going to be able to buy or sell? A lot of you Christians that are hoarding up and you're not helping God's kingdom expand like they did in the book of Acts, you're going to be so ashamed when you waited too long and now you can't help God's kingdom financially. I'm letting y'all know, as far as me and my house, we have dedicated our life to this. We have sacrificed and we don't have to tell y'all the stuff we do behind the scenes, all, all the things we've sacrificed. God knows. The Lord knows. So don't lose your reward. But I said all that to say this. This needs to be your greatest joy is messages like this. Getting to know Christ better. You know, we love y'all. The emails we get from y'all, you just like kids. You like little children in a candy shop. You know what I'm saying? You like Brother Words Lioness. That message was crazy. Thank you, Jesus, for the ghetto gospel ministries. And you're right. You said it right. It's Jesus Christ. Without him, this ministry would be nothing. 
Hey man, I gotta wipe my head after that one. Shit. That was... Okay, so now, where we going with this? Here's the amazing nugget. What if in the Old Testament it was a literal shofar, a literal ram's horn? What if the New Testament we are the sh- we are the shofars? <laughs> Hold on a minute, brother work. Slow down, bro. What did you just say to me? And I know a lot of y'all are upset. Cause you have been you have been putting your you have been lifting up this very high. Some of you went out, you spent three hundred dollars on one of these and you're and that's beautiful. There's still power in the physical shofar. I appreciate this. And yes, you better believe. Brother Words, Lioness, the two boys, and as many in this ministry are going to learn how to blow this show far. And by the way, my youngest son has already blown this correctly. Blew us away. We were in the kitchen and 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 I'm I'm like you know, spit flying and air halfway going through. I said, hey Manny, what's up, man? You were trying. This anointed child walked right up and was like, you know what I'm saying? Dogs barking down the street. Like, I, we looked at him like, are you for real? Praise the Lord, the anointing. Pay attention to the children. They have anointings, I'm telling you. Some of y'all need to read more, pray more, and get together with your children more. Amen. So now listen. I'm so all like. I'm so like excited about this message that I, I I need to like chill and slow down. So we are the New Testament so far. Isn't that amazing? Now I was in meditation and I was like, well, Lord, how is a so far made? So I started to do my research and first off, you know, the animal would have to be sacrificed in order for the so far to be given to us. That was red flag number one. Number two, they would have to hit the, the, the horn and empty out the cartilage out of the inside of the horn. Then they would go through a process where they, the, some of them were different, some didn't, some did. They would, they would heat it up lightly to soften it, to help give it the proper shape for the flow of the air. And then they would cool it with water. Right there, I was downloading, downloading Revelation. Because, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Lord, I knew it. We'll get into that in a minute. Now, how many times do you hear about the Bible telling us to shout, to sing out loud and praise God, right? And again, these are so many. I ain't trying to read all 30 of these. You know what I'm saying? Because I want you to read them on your personal time. If I took the time and and found these scriptures and read them with joy, you need to do it on your own personal time. But I'll give them to you. Psalms 98. Okay, let's let's go to that one together. We'll at least go to one. You know what I'm saying? Or two of a couple. But I'm not going to go through 30 to get a point across. You should already catch it. You know what I'm saying? So, Psalms 98. Look at what it says in verse, uh, verse uh, four. It says in Jesus' name, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. You see that? This, <laughs> this changes your entire walk with Jesus Christ. Now you see what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Yes, the apostles needed financial support. We're not undermining that, but I'm trying to prove to you that the revelations that you receive that change your life, that strengthen your follow, strengthen your walk with Christ, it's priceless. You understand? That's why people are, are just, it's priceless. And that's why I always tell you, do not take this ministry for granted. Ultimately, do not take Jesus Christ for granted, okay? 
Because these messages are designed to change your life. God knows what he's doing when he gives these revelations. I had messages already lined up. And when I got this in the mail, God said, I have a particular message I want you to preach. It's going to change your life. Now, uh, Psalms 35, 27. Write that down as well. Psalm 66, verse 1 and 2. Psalms 47, 1. Psalms 33, 3. Psalms 95, 1. Follow me to Joshua. Got to go check Joshy real quick. You know, me and Josh, we, we peoples. Got to love Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout, and then the wall fell. So you can see the parallel between the trumpets and the people. Why? They were both trumpets. You had the physical trumpet, and you had the human trumpet. That is amazing. Leviticus 9.24, write that down. 2 Samuel 6.15, write that down. 1 Chronicles 15, 28, write that down. 2 Chronicles 13, 15, we're going to read that one. And this is the one when we, we, we talked earlier. I was talking about the war cries. Okay, I want you to see this now. Check this out. 1315. And the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. You see that? So it is a war cry. Because verse 14 says, And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord. And the priest sounded with the trumpets. So... It just goes on and on and on. Zechariah 9 9. But when you hear the Bible say, Shout unto the Lord, sing praises, lift up your voice. And of course, my personal favorite that I was kind of saving till towards the end of the message is in Isaiah 58. And now, what's amazing about this message is it's going to hit you so lovely. Like, you're going to be like, wow, now I get it. Isaiah 58, verse 1. I'm going to give you two minutes to get there while I wipe my forehead. You know how I come prepared. Some of y'all don't have that issue. Brother like me, you know what I'm saying? Get a little hot down here in Atlanta. It says, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So you are commanded to what? Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. I'm about to blow it. Like a trumpet. It's like I am so excited to learn how to do this and to learn the different types of blasts. I wrote a couple down for my own personal studies. One is called the Takaya. It's a long single blast representing the king's coronation. Very amazing. There's one called the Shavarim. I think I'm saying that right. It's three short whale-like blasts, which represents repenting, returning, and you could say like um, repenting, returning, and being healed, right? Or just, uh, it's like a sound of repentance. There's another one called the Terva, which is nine blasts to awaken the soul. And you know, these are just traditions that are handed down, but there's all these different types of trumpet blasts that are for different types of situations, right? So follow along now. So now we're paralleling that in the Old Testament, it was a literal shofar. In the New Testament, we are the shofar. Oh, man. But wait a minute. How could we give a lot of honor and respect to Jesus Christ? By starting with him. Come on. Come on, talk to me. Jesus Christ is the trumpet of God. You follow? Jesus is in the hand of God the Father as the trumpet. 
we are in the hands of Jesus Christ as his as his trumpets. You see the order. So we got to start with the greatest trumpet, Jesus Christ. Now, first off, let's go back to how these are made. First off, they were cut off a sacrifice. And I can't help but to think in Genesis 22, remember when Abraham went to offer up his son? And as he was getting ready to kill his son, God said, Abraham, Abraham, wait. And what did God provide in the bush? A ram was caught by, by the horn in the bush. And there's no way of escaping it. You know how I roll. I was meditating on that and I said, oh, that's deep. And I like, one, one thing you got to love about the word of God with the Holy Spirit, the way it's properly supposed to be, is as you're in meditation about a word, the Holy Ghost will just bring the other scriptures into your remembrance. And you'll be like, ooh, ooh. And you'll just be thinking of these scriptures. He'll bubble it from your inner belly. The Bible says, out from your belly shall what? Flow rivers of living water. The water represents the word. Come on. So, I was like, ooh, that's deep. So, the... The sacrifice of Abraham's son, he was willing to offer it up that God said, I will provide a ram and the horn is what got caught in the bush. So there's a significance there that the horn is what is created into a shofar, right? And I see that as a, a resem it's, it's a foreshadow and a type of God giving up Jesus Christ, like Abraham was willing to give up Isaac. And in essence, Jesus was the the offering that had to go through with it. So, and thank God he saved us, right? He died and rose from the dead on the third day. But I was meditating on how these are made. Well, first off, they have to be removed off of the of sacrifice. Remember that as we move on to this word. Then they have to be hit and hollowed out. The cartilage has to come out of them. Then they're cut to create a hole, okay, where the air can flow through to the other end. Whew. I can't help but to think of Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, in fact, you know what, let's go to that one. I've given out so many scriptures, but wow, look at that, look at that, y'all see that? I'll open right up to Philippians. One one turn. Bang. No no marking, no nothing. Y'all, that happens at least once almost every sermon. Keep it real. You know it's the truth. And that's just the way the word speaks. The word is alive. Never forget that. The word of God is the only living book on the planet. He's the only book that reads you while you read him. He talks to you as you talk to him. But in Philippians chapter 2. And then I open right up to it. That is bananas. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Man. Now, in the Greek, there's a word for this called kenosis. Kenosis, which means to be completely emptied out. Okay, and I want to parallel that to Judges chapter 7 real quick, just to hold weight with what I'm saying. Because this is just the Holy Ghost so talking right now. Because if y'all just see how I'm opening up to these scriptures so fast... Is, is bananas. So Judges 7, 16, it says, And he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with the empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. Now, I wanted to save this because this is, this is heavy. Okay, this is about Gideon in the 300, right? And the significance of the trumpet. But notice what it said. It said he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitcher. So there's this empty significant with the trumpet. So kenosis, right? Jesus was completely emptied of self. And that's when it hit me. 
The trumpet has to be completely hollowed out. It has to be completely emptied to be used. This, this is amazing. Then it has to be cut. Remember that Jesus was wounded. He was pierced and bruised for our iniquities. So he was not only emptied out, he was the sacrifice that would create the horn or the shofar. Jesus is the shofar of God the Father. Man, I can't handle this. Jesus Christ is the shofar of God the Father. He is in the hands of God the Father. Come on. So, Jesus had to kenosis. He had to be emptied out. He had to be cut. So the wind of God. In the Hebrew now. Now the word Holy Spirit. In the Greek is the word pneuma. This is where you get the word pneumatic. Have you ever heard of a pneumatic tool? These are wind operated tools. that, You know when they take the nuts off the tire. Some of those are wind operated. They're pneumatic. And in Hebrew is ruach, right? But it means breath. And this is why in John chapter 3 verse 8 it says those that are born again are like the what? Like the wind, right? Ezekiel chapter 37. When God raises the dead bones, he prophesies to the wind. So you see when the wind stops on the earth in Revelation, it's, it's, a, it's, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. This is when it blew me away. This means that Jesus Christ was completely emptied of self. He was only about his father's business, only cared about the will of his father, our heavenly father, mighty God almighty, Yash Yeshua's mighty, mighty, mighty father. Because if you hear the way Yeshua talked about his father, you would not be foolish to say that it's only Jesus. Okay, there is a oneness of God and we'll get into that and I believe Jesus Christ is God Almighty, and I believe he is the earthly father. He is our father on earth, but there is a father and son relationship, and you should be terrified if you've been taught otherwise, because the Bible says if you deny the father and son, you have a antichrist spirit. Now, to follow me now. So, Jesus Christ was completely emptied of his own will. Which represents the hollowing out of the shofar, right? Because they would have to hit it to take out the cartilage. Jesus Christ was hit and bruised to take out his inner cartilage. I can't, I can't do that. Then he was cut to open up the other hole so he could have the Holy Spirit come through him. And he was a shofar from the beginning, right? Because God declared all things. He declared the end from the beginning, right? So Jesus Christ was a shofar. Because he would speak boldly. Remember, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. The Bible says this, doesn't it? So this, this is when it hit me. So if Jesus Christ was the first shofar as far as in human form in essence now i'm going to go into the old testament where you can see types of shofar but the new testament is where it's now revealed to us okay so after jesus christ became the sacrifice the lamb's horn you could say was inherited to us just like our Heavenly Father, just like our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, we become like unto our Heavenly Father. We become the children of the Most High God. The Bible says we become the sons of God, which means we take on the attributes of Jesus Christ, right? Therefore, we become the shofar for Jesus Christ. You following? So Jesus Christ was the shofar for God the Father. We in return, through his re repenting and accepting Jesus Christ as the lamb who was slain, we become a shofar for Jesus Christ to speak through. That is amazing. Remember the Bible says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of a son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. According to that scripture, Jesus speaks through us from within us. 
Like, how do you handle a word like this? So now we're talking about the different trumpet callings, right? We went through all of these things. Now I want to go through a couple New Testament scriptures on trumpets. I want you to go to Luke chapter 1 with me real quick. We're going to be quick because I'm trying to bring all this together because we got a mighty prayer to do. Okay, Luke chapter 1. I want to go to verse 69. And ha- oh, 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. For he had raised up a what? Horn of salvation for his people. Look at this. Raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he has spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which he had been since the world began. So Jesus is what? A horn of salvation. Now you know. Right? He is the shofar of God. Go to Matthew. Follow now. Come on. Go to Matthew 24. 24 verse 31 and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a what trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other there you got the trumpet again where even the angels blow a trumpet go to first Thessalonians come on follow along let's move let's roll let's roll let's roll and some of y'all are already there you like brother who you talking to with your slow self <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, follow along. Verse, I want to say 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The trumpet of God, the shofar of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. 1 Corinthians, follow, come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You're going to catch a paper cut for real. Going through so many scriptures. Verse 51 going down. Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You better know the trumpet sound. Revelation chapter 8 brings up the seven trumpets. I find that interesting because we read earlier about Joshua, how the priest had how many trumpets? Seven. We hear in the story of Gideon, which is bananas, we hear about the trumpet, right? And we went into that. And again, a lot of these I'm kind of leaving for you to do your own Bible study. And don't Google and try to find up. Do your own study. You know what I mean? Look for these scriptures and just do your own study uh, on the scriptures I give you. You'll have a great time, okay? So now, we're talking about this. So then, no servant is greater than their master, correct? And um, while we're on the topic, I just want to run the Psalms real quick. Verse uh, chapter 47. Just give me one second. Psalms 47. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoying this word? I'm loving this meal. Psalms 47 verse 5. God has gone up with a shout with the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. So God himself has a trumpet and now you know who it is. Jesus Christ Yeshua is the shofar of God and we are the shofar of Jesus. That's amazing because know there's a difference. The Bible says God has translated us from the kingdom of Satan, the power of darkness. He's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we now are in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. That is a whole nother Bible study, y'all. Follow along, though. So this is where it hit me that you and I also have to be emptied out. We have to be kenosis. We have to empty out like Jesus where it's no longer about us. I'm not talking like, you know, new age where you empty yourself out in meditation and demons take over. I'm talking about emptying yourself out to your own will, where it's no longer about you. You are completely empty to be used for the will of God. Jesus, I mean, he is the perfect example, even to death, said, not my will, but thy will be done. Another great example is Joseph. Joseph falling into that empty well 
was very symbolic and a lot of scholars believe there was a hidden message and I believe it that it was an emptying process for Joseph and remember when he cried out my God why have you forsaken me that was a trumpet call oh I can't do this right now this is so good so we have to be emptied out we have to be hit because remember the ancient the the those that would make shofars there was a process where they would have to remove it off the animal which represents us right sacrificing then we'd have to get hit this represents persecution right the bible says it pleased god to smite jesus why had to get out that cartilage had to empty completely jesus had to be emptied of anything of his own will it wasn't about his own will the bible says that butter and honey shall he eat that he may learn how to refuse evil and how to choose good jesus christ went through a growing process that in itself is terrifying terrifying amazing so we have to be hit until all the cartilage comes out of us or self the cartilage represents self then we have to be cut we have to be betrayed and doubted by people that some of you go through with family members and neighbors and co-workers and you're like why god oh lord why do i go through this and god is like be quiet i'm trying to make you into a mighty shofar in the hands of my son jesus christ and you hear whining like a little baby some of y'all loving this word. You've already been liberated just to where we're at now. You're already seeing it for what it is. Ain't God so good? I love Jesus. Round of a cl Come on. Clap for Jesus. Come on. Let's, let's clap for Jesus. He is such an amazing teacher. So here we got the removing of the cartilage. But then depending on who made the horn, sometimes they would heat up the, 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 the outer horn to be able to kind of shape it a little better and they didn't they'd run water on it that represents going through the fire and getting the water of the word on you and then letting god polish you up right and and make you all beautifully shine because actually the word shofar means to shine brilliantly with sound that's what it actually means so there's this process where we have to become suitable for jesus christ to be the shofar in his hand Oh, this is so good. Remember what I told you, that the Holy Spirit is called pneuma in the Greek. That word means breath. In the Hebrew, is ruach, right? The breath of God, right? So if this is the case, then the reason why we have to be born again and filled with the Holy Spirit is so that way the breath can run through us as a shofar. As a shofar. You see the shofar, right? When I, I could blow air all the way through it, this is like we're in the hands of Jesus and he's, you know, he's blowing, don't knock the sound. I'm going to learn by the grace of God. He's blowing his air through us, which is the Holy Spirit. You see, so the Holy Spirit has to be able to flow freely from what from the from the sole of our feet out the crown of our head or our mouth this is the 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 oh that is so good so jesus holds us up like a shofar and he wants to give people a message whether it's a trumpet call for battle one whether it's a cry to wake people up to warn them like a watchman on the wall whether it's a declaration that the king has come or is coming back whatever he wants to sound out of you he can only do it if you allow the holy spirit to move through you this is why you got to live righteous and holy and don't believe that oh, once saved always saved garbage you have to live righteous and holy for the holy spirit to freely move through you okay so this is a amazing revelation because now you got to realize how important it is to endure 
all the suffering you go through. Thinking not strange, the Bible said. When you get hit, when you get cut, when you get in the fire. It's part of the process of emptying you out so Jesus can use you as a shofar to sound the alarm. This is why a lot of y'all brothers and sisters get that fire in you to warn people on your job. You tell people, some of y'all have shouted out in church, repent you liars, you hypocrites. Like Jeremiah, remember when he cried out, he was a trumpet for God. He was a shofar. This is why you have that urge, brother and sister. You have this urge to warn people because you have become a shofar in the hands of Christ. <laughs> this is amazing. So now, here we are. I'm going to give some amazing examples. Of course, we got to start with the book of Acts. Chapter 2. Peep it out now. I'm going to paraphrase it because you should definitely know this by now. Have to check, make sure the battery good on that. You know what I mean? I try to buy the good quality batteries because I try to save a dollar and get those bootleg batteries that don't last half the time. So Acts chapter 2. Let me show you. Let me show you. I'm trying to tell y'all. Yeah, I know I tell you the truth. I lie not in the in the presence of Christ, Paul said in Jesus' name. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came the sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty what? Wind. That's that Numa. The wind of God. I can't, I can't do this. The wind of God. The breath of God. Now listen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting and and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire and it sat on each one of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to what? Speak with other tongues and as the Spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven and when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Guess what happened? The apostles, the disciples, became shofars for Jesus Christ. <laughs> they became shofars for Jesus Christ. The wind blew through them. Picture this as Peter and another one as, you know what I'm saying, whoever. There was 120 of them, you feel me? You know, men and women together and children were there most likely as well. And the wind of God because they were emptied out. They were in this upper room. They were crying out to God. They're like, Lord, let your will be done. That's what the Father's prayer is, right? Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will, God. When we completely get to a place of kenosis where we are emptied out like Jesus Christ, where it's no longer about us, you are golden when you get there. Because get ready, the wind of God, the, the breath of God, the ruach, the numa of God is about to run through you. You're going to sound a mighty roar. You're going to cry aloud and spare not and lift up your voice like a trumpet. And now you know the hidden revelation is you are a trumpet. Literally in the hands of Christ. So all of these, these in the upper room, they were literally human shofars. And when the Holy Spirit came running through, Jesus picked each one of them up and he spoke through each one of them different languages. Just because, see, here's the amazing thing. The shofar in the Old Testament could only make sounds. The shofar in the New Testament can make words. <laughs> that is amazing. Now, we're going through this, right? And should I, should I do it? Yeah, let me just go there real quick. Because the, the one important one that I didn't tell you yet. Hold on. Let me read this one first and then I'll go to that. Judges 6, 34. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. And Abiezer was gathered after him. See that? So the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and then he blew the trumpet. So in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the Numa came upon them and they blew their trumpet which is them they are the shofar we are the shofar of jesus christ i can't take this this is so powerful when you look at um acts chapter 16 
Read that on your own time. When Paul was locked in prison, notice he was doing what I told you in Psalms and all how about shouting and singing unto the Lord with a loud voice. See, this is what people did not understand the revelation that Paul and them knew is they knew they were human shofars. And what Paul was doing was he replayed the walls of Jericho all over again. Because when he was locked in prison, it says he was singing and praising and he was a trumpet. Just uh, 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 just singing and praising. And all of a sudden the walls shook like Jericho and the bars broke and the shackles loosened. Because he was a trumpet and he was doing a particular trumpet call. He was doing a particular trumpet call. Remember, you got to learn the trumpet calls in you. You got to learn what trumpet call Yeshua, the Messiah, wants to do through you. Paul, at that moment, when he was locked in prison, did the trumpet call that Joshua and them did when they surrounded the walls of Jericho. Man. Okay. Let's go deep with it. Acts chapter 7. We can go there. We can go there. Let's go. Come on. Let's move. Acts chapter 7, in Jesus' mighty name. So right here, this whole chapter you want to read, right? The whole chapter. Here you got Stephen, completely emptied. He is completely kenosis, completely emptied out. A mighty shofar in the hands of Christ. Christ was so impressed with Stephen that when Stephen looked up, he seen Christ standing at the right hand. It was because Christ was showing honor to his first martyr okay but what you got to realize is Stephen was a trumpet now this is where it gets heavy look at what it says verse mm, I got to start at 50 verse 50 had not my hand made all these things, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears. Do you always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers do? So do you. Now let's see this in the Spirit for what it's worth now. The Holy Spirit was coming out of Stephen as the breath running through a shofar. And they were resisting the what? The trumpet call. Lord, thank you for this message. Listen to what he says. Which of the prophets have you and your fathers not persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. You have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And when they had heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Now look at what it says though. And he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Look at what this says. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. That means they covered their ears. Listen to this now. Stephen was such a mighty trumpet, they couldn't handle the trumpet sound. They had to block their ears. <laughs> He was a trumpet in the hands of Christ. Amazing. He was kenosis. He was empty. He was already beat through, through persecution. He was emptied out. The cartilage the, was taken out of him. That self, that flesh, nature, right? Not the nature, but you know what I mean. The, his own will was removed. And he was able to have the Holy Spirit, the, the pneuma running through him as the shofar. And it was so powerful, they blocked their, their ears and would not receive the trumpet call. Amazing. 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 So amazing. And if you remember in John chapter 20... It says here, let's go to it real quick. Just go back. John chapter 20. It says in verse, what's it saying? 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, what? Receive you the Numa, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Ghost. Receive you the breath. You are now becoming my shofars. Receive the breath of God. To be able to sound what I want to sound through you. 
This is why obedience is better than sacrifice. This is why you have to be obedient to God and living righteous and holy. So you can be clean on the inside of this so far. Because if there's still cartilage, I don't care if you got some emptied out. If there's cartilage in here, the sound ain't going to be proper. And that's the problem with a lot of you so far is you're not living righteous and holy. You're not striving to at least. And you're not emptying out your own will. It's still about you. The Bible says love men shall be lovers of themselves, haughty and proud and boasters and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You know 2 Timothy chapter 3. And that's the reason why when you tell people about God, people don't really hear you. The trumpet sound is not proper because you're not completely emptied out. And you don't have the wind of God, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit truly running through you. And you need to repent. And for y'all that are striving for righteous and holiness and you're reading and praying and connecting with Christ, you got a mighty shofar sound. You better learn to use them. Okay? Now, there's a lot of different shofars, but one area I want to tap into real quick is um, go to Psalm 75. I got a little nugget I want to show you now. And this is part of the prayer you want to say. Hallelujah. When you pray this prayer. Is in Psalm 75. Let's just go there real quick. Verse 10. All the horns of the wicked... Will also I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. So this lets you know that the wicked ones have horns as well. Now, I wrote one down, Mark chapter 5. There's tons of others too. Remember the Bible say when demons were being casted out by Jesus Christ, they would cry and Jesus would command them to be silent. What they really were, were demonic shofars. They were trying to sound the warning that the king is here with bad breath. Bad spirits are still air. They're still breath. Not the air we breathe, but they're like air. That's why a lot of times, let me not get into that. My point is, is they also sound demonic shofars. You see what I'm saying? In the spirit realm. So Jesus silenced their horn. Wouldn't allow them to cry. He said, be silent. That's a deep little nugget right there. Okay, so we tapped on a lot of areas. We could stop right there, but of course, you know, the Lord got some extra uh, seasoning on, in, in the, uh, on the plate. So we're recapping. We're talking about all of this. And, okay, the other one, too, that I thought of was Luke 18 when he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. He was using himself as a shofar to get God's attention. That's an important nugget. Because it brought healing to him. Jesus came to him. So you have to learn. And remember there's different trumpet calls. You have to learn the different trumpet calls. Just get in tune with the Holy Spirit. And ask God to reveal to you. What trumpet sounds to make every day. If it's a declaration of war against Satan. Because here's, here's, here's where it gets really, really amazing. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Come on, follow me. As I follow Christ. Chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles. Look at what it says. Hallelujah. So it says in Jesus Christ's name. And when they began. Uh, verse 22. And when they began the singing to praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. Which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And it goes on to say that this praise confuses the enemy. So when you make a trumpet sound, you also confuse the enemy where the enemy will actually fight itself. And you know a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. So that's a spiritual warfare tactic that I wanted to show you and tell you about. Okay? So again, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Now in Revelation, seven times Jesus Christ says, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying. Notice the Spirit is breath and it speaks 
through the shofar. And Jesus has given us a hint in Revelation that we also, just like how we want to pray this prayer, which I'm excited to do real soon with y'all, not only do we want to pray to be a shofar to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that his breath can run through us to sound whatever noise he wants to make, whatever declaration he wants us to make, but we also want to have ears to hear his shofar, his trumpet. That's amazing. That's amazing. So we have to pray, Lord, give me the ears to hear your trumpet sounds, to hear your voice. That is amazing. Now, this is one of the grand finales. I want to save it towards the end. So while we're here, let's go to Esther. And we're going to go, we're not going to read the whole story, okay? Just for time's sake. But we are going to read chapter four a little bit. Follow up. Follow along. Let's go. Esther. Come on, Esther. Where you at? All right. Esther. Chapter 4. Okay, you following? Now, we can start in verse 1. In Jesus' name. When Mordecai, remember, one of the, one of the uh, other titles of this was the cry of Mordecai. It says, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and a bitter cry. And it came even before the king's gate, and none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. Now pause right there. I kind of want to make this a separate message because it is so powerful. Eh. But I can't help it. I got to tell y'all the nugget. So I was reading this one day, and the Holy Spirit just moved on me, and that's when the revelation hit me. You got to have a cry of Mordecai in you. Now, in essence, what was Mordecai? After reading and going through this whole sermon, Mordecai was what? A shofar. He was a shofar, a, a trumpet cry that re finally reached the ears of Esther, ultimately saving the people. Now, listen to this carefully. Look at the reaction the cry of Mordecai did. It caused that wicked man Haman to be hung by his own weapon of warfare. It caused Esther to get the attention of her husband, the great king. And even though the king was not able to take back his decree, he provided, he provided weapons of warfare for them to defend themselves. That, I let, that lets you know that if you sound the right trumpet call, our King Jesus Christ will provide weapons of warfare that are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's so good. So the cry of Mordecai will create a deliverance in your life to get the king's attention where you're trying to wake up the bride of Christ. That represents Esther. You want to right, wake up Esther or the bride or these churches that are sleeping on Sunday. Right? That's why the Bible says, Awake thou to sleepest, and what? Rise from the dead, and Jesus Christ shall give thee light. Many Christians, even though they go to church, they, have, they go through the motion, they're in the choir, a lot of them are still sleeping. They're Esther, not even paying attention to the annihilation um, scrolls that are hung all around the city, that the, her people will be destroyed. A lot of Christians have no clue that the Antichrist is getting ready. He's sharpening his guillotine. He's making his war machine ready for the church. He's getting, in, in California, they're trying to ban the Bible. This is not a game, y'all. You can preach in other countries and get arrested. In London, you can get arrested if you offend somebody with the gospel. So the cry of Mordecai will wake up the church or Esther, get the attention of Jesus, and in return, Jesus will supply us the weapons of warfare to fight the enemy in the spirit realm. That is the amazing revelation of the cry of Mordecai. That's amazing. Now, 
I saved the best for last. Matthew chapter 27. This is it right here. This is the fullness of, of where I'm bringing this message before we do a, an amazing prayer led by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you go to Matthew, if you go with me now to 27, I want you to see this now. Follow along. 27 verse 50. It says, and I got to take my hat off for this. Verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Now, remember the things that Jesus spoke of on the cross, right? When he he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. These were certain trumpet... Wow. Wow. These were certain trumpet calls that Jesus Christ did on our behalf. He sounded the trumpet with a great cry. He released that last numa, ruach, of the Holy Spirit running through him as the breath coming out of him. To sound the last trumpet that God the Father have mercy on them. For they know not what they do. Man. I ain't going front, man. That hit me. So we had strategic trumpet sounds that he had to make on the earth. And there's tons of them in the Gospels. If you read all the different trumpet sounds that Jesus Christ made. But that right there. That cry. Was the last trumpet sound he made. Until he, of course, was raised from the dead on the third day. The sacrifice, the ram in the bush that God provided all that time by the horn, which is the shofar, cried out with a mighty trumpet sound, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If Jesus did not make that trumpet sound and cry out, we would not exist right now. God would have annihilated everything into non-existence. That's terrifying. So never take the Lord Jesus Christ for, Christ for granted for, for what he has done for us. What he has... Just, just amazing. <sighs> well, I want to go through a couple. So our goal, our responsibility as shofars of Christ... Is we have to sound the trumpets for battle. Which have power. I'm telling you. If there's certain demonic attacks happening in your life. A family member. Whatever the case be. In your city. There's a certain trumpet call. Where you can sound the trumpet like they did in the Old Testament. And instead of the walls of Jericho falling. You can make the walls of Satan fall. Whether it's the walls of addiction. The walls of depression. The walls of uh, addiction to porno and lust. Or unforgiveness. Or whatever it is. Sounding the trumpet in a battle cry. Can really confuse the enemy. It delivered Paul and them out of prison. You have the trumpets for signaling. Right? To call for a signal. You have trumpets for warning people. When you tell people to repent. You're really a shofar. And you're, you're warning people as the trumpet of God, trumpet of Christ, to cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, the Bible says, right? So you have to, because remember, the Ezekiel 33 says, if you don't warn the people of their sins, see, a lot of y'all believers are compromisers. You're afraid to tell people on the job. You're afraid to tell family members and so-called friends that you grew up with to put down the sin and, and get married or live holy and whatever it is they're doing sinful. A lot of you don't say nothing. That is terrifying. Because God wants you to be a shofar. He wants you to be, Ezekiel 33, a watchman on the wall warning the people of the enemy. You're supposed to warn people the end of days is here. You're supposed to cry aloud and spare not. Let people know to turn from their sins. Tell people they're living in sin and if they don't repent, they will perish. Cry aloud. 
Just know what to do. Let Christ hold you in his hand and blow through you the breath, the pneuma, the ruach, the Holy Spirit will sound through you. Just like the book Acts, the mighty Russian wind went through those disciples and they spoke as trumpets. That was the amazing revelation. Then you have a, a trumpet of, of to gather the people together. That's a certain sound. And don't worry. I know these, uh, you know, there's people that will show you the do, 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 and all these different sounds that mean different things. That's for the physical trumpet. And listen, these physical trumpets are still at power. Okay. I felt it. There's a power you feel when these trumpets sound off, especially, of course, when it's done by a believer. Amen. And notice all around the world right now on the news, Jason A got a ton of videos about people are hearing strange sounds coming from the heavens. I'm, I mean, are you for real? God is warning us these trumpet sounds. He's warning us the angels of the Lord, the seven trumpets are going to be sounding at some point in the near future. You better be ready. You better be ready to go. That's what I'm going to say to you. And one of the greatest trumpet sounds is declaring Jesus as the return king. It was one of the most powerful trumpet sounds when you would sound a trumpet to declare a king. Now they'd sound a trumpet at the Sabbath. They sound a trumpet during the feast of God. But the most powerful, in my opinion, is that one. Declaring Jesus Christ as Lord. What means sometimes, brothers and sisters, you need to get somewhere alone. I don't care if it's on the highway. But necessarily, you don't have to be alone. Let people hear you. But just don't be crazy and have the police knocking at your door at 1 in the morning because you're yelling like crazy and the neighbors are waking up. Use wisdom. Unless you can't handle it, then control it. If it just happens, it happens. But try to secure your closet to be soundproof so you can yell and cry out in the closet or go somewhere alone. It's, I'm telling you, a lot of you, you know what your problem is? You do not know how to cry a lot. You do not know how to cry aloud. Learn to yell at the right time. Jesus Christ is king. The king eternal is coming. Make way for Yeshua. You got to learn to cry aloud like a trumpet and raise your voice. There's a power that comes with that. I'm telling you. Just be led by the Lord when to do it. Don't be a self-willed shofar. Be a shofar simply in the hands of Christ that whatever sound he wants you to make, whether it's a trumpet call of declaring Jesus Christ the coming great king, that he is Lord, or a trumpet call for battle, a trumpet call for signaling, a trumpet call for victory, a trumpet call for warning. There's so many trumpet calls. Let him be the one to decide which trumpet called to make through you. But your words have to be as a trumpet with the Holy Spirit backing it. That's the power. That's, let me tell you something. In, back in those days, when you heard the sound of the trumpet, you stopped at what you were doing because it has so much power. Imagine with the Holy Ghost speaking through our mouth. We can wake up 20 people, half drunk, in the park during the daytime and the sound of the trumpet will repent you will burn with your drunkard spirit they i'm telling you it'll shake people to the core your trumpet sound can wake people from a, a spell oh that's deep you can break curses with the right trumpet call <laughs> this, this i love this word this word you better share this some of y'all are not sharing these messages and you're going to be held accountable. God is going to have to deal with you because it's not right. You're not telling people about these messages. You're not striving to partner up and try to support this kingdom of heaven in this ministry. The, the kingdom of heaven in this ministry. And listen, you're, you're going to be, God is going to judge you over that. I'm just being real with you. Listen, you got to help spread these messages, okay? Do your best to support this ministry. We are trying to get these messages as far as we can. It has nothing to do with us. It's Jesus and your so-called best friend, right? Jesus Christ. He should be your best friend. He lives here. So if you truly love him, you would do your best to help push this ministry to war against all these fake ministries. These liars and these false prophets everywhere. When you discover a prophetic ministry, yeah, I said it. I don't take it back. God has chosen me as a general in the gospel 
It is nothing I've done to earn it. He chose me. He chose Lioness. And he chose a lot of you in this ministry. Then if you see a true ministry like this, that's truly born again, Holy Spirit led, and you don't want to help push this ministry out, then truly to me, you're an enemy of the cross. My personal opinion. So, helping this ministry is not just financial support. It's praying for us, fasting, uh, getting on the conferences when we have, spreading these messages on your social media pages, telling your co-workers about the ministry. Ultimately, why? To bring people these messages. That's all. I don't need a high five, y'all. I don't need accolades. I appreciate honor. The Bible says you show double honor to those who elders and those who have fought the good fight. That's fine. I need you to do that so we can get these messages to as many lost souls who don't know they are a trumpet. They don't know about the eternal Sabbath. They don't know about the spirit of the swine. They don't know these messages that you're feeding off of every week. And it's not right. You need to start helping more. And and shout out to those that are really, you're really doing your best for the kingdom. Don't feel overwhelmed, okay? God, I'm speaking to everybody, which means there's different type of people that watch these messages. If you're trying your best and you're giving it your all to the kingdom of heaven and in this ministry, don't be overwhelmed, okay? We appreciate you and we love you. We thank God that you prove your love not only by your words, but your actions. But there's a lot of people out here that have been bound with a spell. They don't want the kingdom of heaven to truly expand. They don't because if they did, they would help more period. Makes perfect wisdom to me. Or what they would say sense, right? Makes perfect sense. But I say wisdom. So, we went through this whole message. Now it's time for the prayer. Now it's time for the prayer. This is amazing. This is this is phenomenal. Phenomenal. We're going to go a couple routes with this. And of course, I got to take my hat off to pray. That's how I roll. I think it's disrespectful to pray with your head covered as a man. Um, That's my personal uh, discernment of what the scriptures say. That's not legalism as some rebellious Christians. They they want to say everything's legalistic just because they want to get tattoos. They want to wear hats all. They want to grow long hair as a man. Like all of these things. You can go ahead and play that game if you want. But as far as me and my house, we're going to strive to obey what thus says the Lord. And if I take my hat off to pray, that shows honor and respect to Jesus Christ. So, with that being said. <sighs> We got a lot to do here. I want you to say this with me. Now, if we recap, right? Well, let's recap first before we before we get into this. So let's recap as we're wrapping this up. Number one, we went through a whole lot of scriptures that you got to take your time and read different scriptures about the shofar. We realized that shofars are for certain situations in life, right? Uh, judges, you got to read Judges, especially chapter 6, all about the shofar and the power of it. Read about, you know, Joshua with the walls of Jericho. These are ones I want you to read on your own. There's a reason why I left it for you because the nuggets you might find, if you read, you see what I'm saying? But we went through a whole lot of scriptures. God says, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. So you're actually commanded to be a shofar for Jesus Christ. Right, we talked about how Jesus had to lead by example. He was the original shofar for God the Father, right? He's the one that cried out. He's the one that made the sound of warning. He warned the people, repent, turn from their way. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was a walking, talking shofar in the hands of God the Father. Holy Spirit flowing through him. Amazing. This is why the Bible says we're in the hands of Christ because we are the shofar of Christ. Right? We talked about the different sounds, right? There's different sounds that the shofar would make for different situations. We now we know why the Bible talks about how you should praise God and sing to him and give glory to him. Because you're a shofar. Amen. Uh, you know, enough. Let let's pray. We get the point. Say this with me. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. Wash me in your holy blood. Lord, I thank you for this amazing message that you cooked in the kitchen and gave to your servant to feed me. I praise you, Jesus. Help me never to take your word for granted. 
Don't let the devil take it out of my heart. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I know now that the persecution process, the suffering, the hardship, I am being molded and formed into your shofar. I have to be emptied out. The cartilage has to come out of me by being hit and cut, heated, and washed with the watering of the word. I have to be completely hollow on the inside, which represents my will leaving and only wanting the will of God the Father in my life. Help me to get to that level, Jesus. I want to be your shofar. Holy Spirit, just like you did in the book of Acts, please, I want you to run your breath, Jesus, through me. That way when I cry aloud, when I give a warning shout, when I give a, a battle cry shout, when I'm ready to go to war against the enemy at night, I will sound the shofar out of my mouth and confuse the enemy. I will make the enemy tremble through the trumpet call of God in me as the shofar in the hands of Christ. The walls of Jericho, whatever that represents, Lord, use me to be a mighty trumpet, a shofar to tear down the walls in people's lives. Demonic curses and witchcraft and spells and depression, addiction, whatever it is, Make me a mighty shofar in your hands, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, may I be worthy that your breath, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the Numa of God can run through me that I may sound whatever the Lord wants to blow through me, whatever sounds he wants to make, whatever words he wants to speak out of me, I want to be a shofar in the hands of Yahshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, also break the horn of the enemy. Break the shofar of Satan. All his false prophet shofars. Smite them and break their horns. Lord Jesus Christ, I love you so much. Please anoint me to be a mighty shofar in your hands. And also, there it is. Lord, also, give me the ears to hear your shofar call, your trumpet. Whether it's through other people that warn me, whether it's through other people that wake me up or give me a victory cry or a trumpet of warning or, or the trumpet of the return of the king, one of the greatest calls. I want to hear that trumpet sound. With the, the rapture, the snatching away of the saints. If my ears can't hear that trumpet, God forbid, I won't be able to make it. Lord, make my ears hear all your trumpet calls. That I never miss the sound of your trumpet. That I always hear your warning. Whether it's through your servants, whether it's through an angel, whether it's directly from you, O God. With Christ as your shofar, your trumpet. Give me ears to hear that I may hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. I thank you, O God. I thank you. Make me shine brilliantly with sound. Make me mighty in your hands that I never try to take the glory. I never get puffed up. I remain empty and humble. Not about me. The kenosis, that I'm empty that all the cartilage is out of me as the horn of God, the trumpet of God, the shofar of God in the hands of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm asking you to do it. And I receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I start from this day moving forward that I will cry aloud. I won't worry about the people. I won't worry about persecution. I won't worry what people think of me. God, if you tell me to shout out, repent to a crowd, I'll do it as a trumpet of God. If you tell me to declare war at night against the principalities and powers, I will trumpet the, I will make the sound of war. I will do the trumpet sound of battle to confuse the enemy. May I do trumpet sounds that makes the devil fight his own kingdom. Make the demons fight each other. Confuse them. Make me an anointed trumpet that I send confusion to the enemy. Hallelujah! According to 2 Chronicles. Lord Jesus Christ, make me a mighty trumpet that I will surround any wall of Jericho and make it fall in Jesus Christ's name. Make me a trumpet that can wake people up 
and raise them from the dead. Make me a trumpet that can gather the saints together. There it is. Hallelujah. Make me a trumpet of victory. That I declare victory in cities. That the kingdom of heaven has taken over this jurisdiction. This providence. This place. Hallelujah. Make me a trumpet that makes demons tremble. At the sound of God in me. Through the Ruach. The breath of God coming out of me. Anoint me God. Right now humbly I ask. Clean me. Use me. In Jesus Christ's name fit for the master's use. Amen, Shilah. I got no, I, I'm, I'm done, y'all. I receive that prayer. I declare that over my house and over this ministry. So if you're a partner, if you're in this ministry, I, I speak that over you. You that are sincerely in this ministry. I pray this over the church. This is amazing. Amazing revelation. And brother... For you obeying Jesus Christ, you didn't realize as much as I appreciate this, this is going to go on the wall. We're going to learn how to use this because, yes, I still want to use this literally because I'm going to sound this in the physical and I'm going to sound out my mouth in the spiritual as well. But, brother, I pray God rewards you for sowing this into the ministry, not knowing that you were used by Christ to birth a mighty word like this. Brother, I hope you got a smile on your face. And, and, and thank you, brothers and sisters, for all the support you guys are doing, the dedication. And if, if you're new to this ministry, become a partner. Get in the fight. Help strengthen this ministry to reach as many people as we can. What can you do to help the kingdom of heaven? Don't underestimate the calling of God in your life. And you're appreciated here in this ministry. Never forget it. We love you guys very much. Shout out to Jesus Christ. What an amazing message. I'm like in awe over this message. Not realizing this whole time that we are the shofars. <laughs> you are a shofar, sister. Brother, you are a shofar. The question is, do you have cartilage? Do you have self all up in you and ego and arrogance and pride? What's in your horn? That's stopping the breath of God from fully operating through you. Empty out. Get filled with the will of God. Submit yourself to Christ. And watch him joyfully pick you up, daughter of God, child of God, son of God. Watch him pick you up, brother or sister. And use you in the city you're in. The nation you're in. The country you're in. Use you mightily as a shofar. In the hands of Christ. Amen. Shout out to the chef of chefs. Until next time. We'll have more messages coming. Um, keep in touch with us. We appreciate your emails. Your messages. Your everything. We love you guys.